Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you had time to recover a little bit from the shocking and frightening last piece. <laughs> now I can promise you it's going to be a little bit lighter. So we travel across Europe from Bohemia right into Italy, where we have the wonderful Italian composer Gioacchino Rossini, who lived the, around the first half of the 18th century, and he was famous for composing operas. He composed many famous operas. Maybe you know uh, Barriere di Sevilla uh, or La Cenerentola, many wonderful pieces. And he also composed an opera about the Swiss hero uh, of the Swiss liberation wars, uh, Guillaume Tell, Wilhelm Tell. Uh, and this overture is extremely famous because of one tune that you probably know very well and you will hear very soon. But first of all, I want to explain to you a little bit what the function of an overture is. You know that every opera starts with a piece that is normally only played by the orchestra without the singers. So it gives the composer the chance to settle the mood for the action, for the plot that's going to come up, and also to describe where the plot is taking place. And the overture to the opera Guillaume Tell is a great example for that, because in the beginning of this opera, He's taking us right into the Swiss Alps where the sun is just rising. And he does that only with using five celli, very low string instruments, the big, the big violins, as some <laughs> like to say. <laughs> Violoncello. And he lets five of them play solo. This word solo is again an Italian word. Most of the musical terms are Italian words and it means alone. So those cellists who normally play the same voice, all of them, now have to play all separately, all on their own. And this is how this sunrise sounds. Wonderfully played, bravo. <laughs> and as you could just hear in the timpani, which is the big instrument throning back there, can you play once more what you've just played? Yeah. So when you are hiking or skiing in the Alps, you know that a thunderstorm is probably right around the corner, approaching quite soon. So this is the timpani kind of telling us that something not too good is coming in the far distance. And the thunderstorm approaching sounds like this. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to get a little bit loud as the thunderstorm is there. <coughs> And 
Rossini is using an instrument here which wasn't very common at that time, which is called the Gran Casa, back there. Can you give it a whip for us? Thank you. So actually this could be used in any techno or pop song of nowadays. So you see <laughs> those two words are actually not very far apart. After this thunderstorm has settled then, we come to a wonderful and beautiful shepherd's scene. Yes. So in the middle of a cow herd or a sheep herd, we have a shepherd playing on his shepherd's pipe. And this instrument is represented in the orchestra by an instrument called English horn, cor anglais in French. So basically a very long oboe. It has the same reed as an oboe and it sounds a little bit lower. Let's have a listen. And you will see there's also a little bird joining him. And then suddenly this peaceful scene here is interrupted by the military trumpets back there. And the composer is reminding us what this opera is actually about, the Swiss Liberation War. And this sounds like this. been a little bit different back in the day than it is today. Nowadays I think people are sitting in the basement and they are drones. And it has always been a horrible thing but it's not getting better I have, I have the feeling. But back in the day, as you can see on the next picture, people were of course sitting on horses. And how can you display horses in an orchestra? Of course with a galop rhythm. Let's hear how this rhythm sounds in the strings. So this, every one of you who has sat on a horse before, sat on a horse before, probably knows how this feels, this rhythm. And since it would be a little bit boring to only have this rhythm, he writes this wonderful melody that every one of you knows. I think it has been used in many movies, some Disney movies, and of course in famous Clockwork Orange by Stanley Kubrick. And yeah, this is the famous tune. Thank you. 